Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Real Hacker Hours podcast. Today I'm going to continue working on that one sim grip tool. However, this is going to be like a bit of an addendum to that. Effectively, right now what I'm working on is a Ghidra script, and the purpose of that is to export the decompilation of a binary, which we can then run some grip rules on. And that way we can effectively run some grip on binaries that do not they do not have the source code for cool so this is kind of the starting of that um let's i'm gonna go ahead and just run it because i forget exactly where i left off on it let's see support analyze headless Yeah, this is the command I saved. To run this, no, I'm just running it real quick just to make sure that it does run indeed. Okay, it works. So, what this command does, um, how Ghidra, so taking a step back with this Ghidra script, it runs off of the Ghidra's headless analyzer, which what that is is it's the component of Ghidra that you can effectively run it without running the GUI. You can just run it from the command line. How Ghidra's headless analyzer works is there's a, I th believe it's a script. Yeah, it's a script that effectively analyzes headless. You have to run it through that. Um, syntax for it. First argument is the directory to, or the location of the project. Second is the project name. And then after that, just do tag process for process a binary process this all binary gets zero zero zero, which that is in here. If I'll let me show you that. You can just run as is like that. Cool. And then after that, tag postscript, which that's for after analysis. Just run the Recram JavaScript, which is in. Let me pull it up. It is in this directory. So Ghidra has some like directories which will look for certain screw actually is in here. No, let me just find it real quick. Find tech name. Hopefully this is the right, no. Give me a second one. Okay, yeah, sorry. It's in this directory here. Features by patterns, Ghidra scripts, requiem.java. This is here. Here is the actual Java file. Ghidra has some set directories in which it will look for the actual scripts that I can run. Um, by default, has a bunch under Ghidra features, whatever. Also under Ghidra features, I'll have a bunch of example scripts for the various Ghidra scripts that you can have. But yeah, that's the command. Um, let's take a look at the script. What does it actually do? I forget what it does. Okay, it opens up the output directory, temp recream out. Um, if it exists, it'll just enter it through until it finds a directory name which doesn't exist, and then it will go ahead and make it. Function. Okay, and also we'll let iterate through the various functions, which it first gets the first function here, and then it'll just enter it through with like funky equals get function after this function. It will, let's see, what is it doing here? It will set up a decompiler using the setup decompiler. Full disclosure, I think this, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this function is just copied from one of the example Ghidra script yeah, files. This one will set up effectively a decompilation interfaces, which what we actually use to decompile it. Um, looking through here, 
makes a file, decompiles the file, and actually writes it to it. And let's take a look. L looking at this um, file, all the stress cut file in addition to it being horrendous and being needed to be cleaned up, looks like it has most of the functionality I want. Let's see your requiem out. Okay. Temp requiem out. Let's go with main. Okay, so you can see that was it's actually able to like de decompile and store it. Um, let's go ahead and just clean this this uh, script up. Don't need these two things. One thing I would like to do right now, the output director is kind of hard set. I would like to effectively change that so you can like pass it through like a command line argument or something. I'm gonna pause the stream for a second while I Google how to do that. Okay, I'm back. So I found this function here, get script args, will get the arguments passed to the, yeah, to, to the script. Let me just add a few extra print statements just to illustrate my point. Save it there and save it there. Cool. And we run it. As you can see with our command, we're not giving any arguments to the script. So here you see it printed out zero, which it's printing out the length of the arguments to the script. So that should be it. Let's try giving it two arguments. Okay, so we see it's two, so this looks like it's pretty accurate. I'm gonna add in an additional, well, just a check here, just to check, oh, hey, is the length greater or equal to one? And if so, take the first argument as the output directory. So we have if, script args dot length greater than or equal to one. Hmm. I'm gonna have, how do I wanna do this? I know, string output directory path is equal to script args zero else Actually, let's declare it here. That we don't need multiple variable declarations. Otherwise, we could have this be slash temp slash requiem out. amount. Okay, cool. And then we have it here. I'll put directory path. And I'm just going to add this here. So effectively, what I've done is I've kind of redesigned this in a way in which I'll um, you could specify through command line argument that you want the output directory to be something else, or you could just have it to default under temp. And what that will do is it will allow and also also work with the fact that you can have you can continually run in the same output directory and it'll just create more directories just with an integer appended to it. Okay, cool. Now that we have that in you know, order, let's test it out. Let's try slash home slash guy in a tuxedo. Yeah, I expect it to have a slash. If this works, it should generate the output file under home guy in a tuxedo. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot a semicolon. Let's try running it now. And it is there. Okay, cool. So that works. Um, one last thing I want to do with the script before I just get to cleaning it up is here. Looking at these names, something I just realized, semgrip will only, say if you specify to run on C files, which is that's how we're running it, it will only run on files that have a .c extension. So I'm going to add that there. In addition to that, what I'm also going to do is with the naming convention, I'm going to append the function address to the end of it. That way, for some reason, we have two functions named the same thing. We won't get like a conflection that way. So how can I do this? Create new file, output directory plus function docket name plus going to append to the entry point plus let's see I forget if the dot well, well the get entry point function returns an address or a actual hex value and I made a smooth brain mistake did entry point instead of get entry point. I'm gonna Google that real quick. Gidra API function. Looking it up. What is the return value for a get entry point? It is an address. So I'm gonna to need to add a dot to string. And let me guess the error. Okay, that was a bit weird. Requiem out. Okay, I made I clearly made a mistake here. Requiem out. Yeah, I need to remove these slashes because it's making them underneath there. Which is not what I want at all. So we move that. So we should have a second requiem. Yep, requiem out one. And we. S I'm not sure why it appears to be making duplicates of everything. Let's take a look here, see if we can't figure out why it's doing that. Create new file. Where is this called? So it's only called here. Oh, I'm pretty sure I know why. So here, let's go into Requiem out attack one. I'm gonna test it real quick. Frame dummy. Okay, so we can see that the original file name that we had has the source code. The renamed one doesn't. The reason for this being is because with Java, how I was doing this, I was creating the file using like the Java file functionality and then writing to it using the file writer. Turns out one thing I did not realize, I just realized now file writer will actually create the file if it's not ex in existence. And also when I changed the directory for the new file, I didn't change it with the file writer. So if I wanted to, I could just go ahead, copy all of this, paste it here, and also delete these lines of code since they're not needed. 
if my understanding of this is correct, the new output directory should have the files as we want them to. Mercury amount two. Okay, this works. And also one thing we're seeing is we're getting some of like the PLT functions here, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm not really too concerned about that. And yeah, okay, cool. So this is working for now. I'm probably gonna have to clean up the script later, but oh well. I actually, hang on a second. Okay, so cool. We finished the functionality of this script since the only thing really left is just to clean it up. I'm not gonna record that. So thank you for watching. See you next time.